Okumura is a lonely, miserable loser who thought he only liked 2D girls until he met an otaku baddie who showed him that 3D giants help you jizz faster. However, before he met her, he was just a second year in high school who stopped liking girls after his own mom dumped him for another guy. He also confessed his feelings for his grade school crush, but the girl told him his face would give her nightmares if she dated him, and his classmates bullied him for being a creep. Since then, he has resorted to managing a manga club just to simp on his 2D waifu named Lilio. One morning, while the deranged idiot fawns over his 2D waifu as usual, a girl named Mariso walks into the club room to ask if he is taking new members, but he is shocked to see a 3D girl coming to talk to him. She introduces herself and tells him she really loves manga, but Akumura assumes that she probably likes crappy mangas whom no one gives a shit about. But the club is instead for cakes and melons and the cultured guys who love them, and he is not going to let some girl ruin his secret plot-filled sanctuary. He thinks of making excuses to reject her, but Ririsa sees some figurines on a shelf and admires them. Ririsa thinks this is his perfect opportunity to cancel her, so he tells her that the figurines aren't his baby sister's dolls, but a limited edition strippable figurine. As he tells her this, she touches one of the figurines, and it suddenly gets stripped, but when Okumura thinks this will irritate her and make her realize that this club is for sinners, she likes what she sees and tells him it's not bad, shocking him. Observing the figurines, she asks him if they are based on art by a hentai manga from the 5th anniversary booklet, leaving him shocked that she knows that. She reviews the figurine, saying the good things about it, but she comments that the panties are boring, and if she were Lilio, she would have gone with a black lace as this would make it look more sus. Okumura is shocked and wonders if this is an OnlyFans model, and she immediately apologizes for being so naughty when they have literally just met. She tells him she shouldn't have judged the panties. But Okumura replies that he didn't freak out because of that, but that he never thought girls could be into stuff like this. However, she tells him she has always been a fan of cute, seductive characters since she goons for a living. She feels weird about this, but Okumura tells her it isn't, as he also edges all day until his bum becomes red. He tells her it seems she knows a lot about Lilio, and she replies that no one loves her more than she does, but Okumura thinks she is just yapping since she is a girl. Only losers like him know how it feels to jizz to such a perfect model, anyway. Rurisa immediately feels challenged and tells him to try her, saying she has always liked heroines designed for male audiences, and even though the characters may be fictional, all the things boys like about them are real, leaving Okumura's jaw on the ground. Rurisa notices the movie on his screen and immediately starts to drool over it, surprising Okumura that she also knows about that. He is excited that she is a perfect Lilio fan but also sad that she is a girl as he could have gotten a member with whom he can edge to Lilio's movies. While he also feels sad because she is 3D, she asks him if he could help her with something, but she fears that he would think she is weird. He wonders what that is but tells her that a real otaku never judges someone by the things they love, and on hearing this, she blushes. However, Okumura wonders why he is already supporting her when he was trying to cancel her a few moments earlier. Marisa runs to her bag to bring out some DVDs with sus banners, making Okumura wonder if she wants to watch corn with him or wants them to create a brother and stepsister scenario. What do you mean by that? However, she tells him no and says that they are a collection of cosplay videos and photos, that she reveals that she wants to make one of her own, too, shocking him. He critically asks her if she will be wearing those sus revealing clothes, and she reminds him that he said he wouldn't judge. She then reveals that she has always loved to wear the costumes of manga characters, especially if they are cute, and will reveal her melons to the world, but she couldn't because of how people would look at her. However, one day, she went to her first in-person event, where she saw several ladies fulfilling her dream and actively publicizing their milk jugs without criticism, which made her realize that it's awesome when people can openly and proudly pursue their passions. She then states that she has decided to be proud of what she likes and make a custom with Lilio, surprising him. He asks her where she needs him in this boring dream of hers, and she replies that he will be her cameraman. He immediately objects that he doesn't know about cameras, except that the cameraman never dies, and she replies that she is also new to cosplaying, and that they are gonna figure out what to do as long as the passion is there. She tells him she would rather have someone who is also Lilio's fan take her pictures. She then goes on to say that she has always known she would do this in high school, as she walked past the room. She noticed Lilio's poster on the wall and immediately knew this was her opportunity. She then officially asks if she can join the manga club, 
and after thinking about it for some minutes, considering his pals that might mock him, he decides to let her in, making her excited. He tells her not to worry about him and that she should wear all kinds of costumes she wants since he only has an interest in 2D girls. However, as he also confidently assures her that he won't feel anything toward her, she decides to change into a costume right away and starts pulling off her uniform, flustering him. He looks away and quickly shuts the window, wondering what kind of a shameless idiot this is. He starts feeling sus and embarrassed, but he convinces himself that it's because it was sudden and not because he is affected by her plot. She soon changes into Lilio's costume and tells him to turn. Upon seeing her, he hugs the wall immediately, shocked to see Lilio in the flesh, standing right in front of him. He wonders if he accidentally slipped into a 2D world, because why the fog is his bone rising? She shows him her plot and guide as he tries to calm himself, immediately blowing off his brain. Later, she cools his head with a cold towel on her lap. However, he soon realizes that he is on her lap and immediately starts to consider 2.5D girls. His head instantly begins to overheat again, frying his brain from the heat. The next day, in the club room, he wonders what came over him to have let Rarissa in, and he tries to convince himself that he doesn't love her and has sworn his love to Lilio. Marissa appears, and on seeing her, Bruce starts to fumble again. She thanks him for allowing her in the club, and soon notices that he is watching a series she has always wanted to get her hands on. However, the only thing Okumura desires to get his hands on is his joystick. But since he doesn't have that, he makes do with a gamepad instead and starts playing the Siamis 3. After a while, Marissa tells him she would also like to cosplay today, and that he would have to take her pictures. She immediately starts to change, making him flustered again. After he closes the window for an incognito mode effect, he faces the wall so his eyes won't behold evil, but he is surprised that this is affecting him. Marissa dresses in her costume and gives Okuma her iPhone X to take pictures. Her first pose is exactly the same as Lalil's pose in one of the chapter's sign-offs, making his heart skip a beat. He takes several pictures of her and returns the phone to her afterward. He turns around to remind himself that he cannot fall for her, because he already portrayed himself as a Sigma who can control the direction of his magnum, so he shouldn't be caught slacking. She tries to pull off her top to change back into her uniform, but her zipper suddenly gets stuck and she tells him to assist her. Bro initially feels embarrassed, but he maintains his aura and walks up to help her, only to end up breaking the zipper while trying, thus revealing her balloons. He immediately covers his eyes. However, Marissa suddenly trips and almost falls, but Okumura's hands are there to save her. The idiot continues to hold her, not realizing that his hands are holding her milk jugs, but she calls his attention to it, causing him to fall to the ground in embarrassment and apologize for being naughty. Afterward, she tells him to excuse her so she can get dressed, and he runs off immediately. Later, after Orisa is done, she wonders why her heart is at 200 miles per hour as she thinks of Okumura and she immediately gets on her way home. The following day, the school principal is taken by surprise when a well-known model enrolls, bringing with her an apparent disdain for manga and a particular dislike for Okumura. As she walks into class, all the beta males in class start to glaze over her like simps, while the girls just watch from behind, suddenly realizing that they are ugly as hell. Makari asks the group of admirers if they have a manga club, leading one guy to think he might have a chance with her, until she reveals her hatred for manga. Meanwhile, Okumura walks across the hallway, slouching like an idiot and feeling terrible for touching Marissa's heavenly pillows. He makes his way to the club, hoping to avoid Marissa, but she's already there, waiting for him. They share an awkward exchange, and Marissa is surprised that her heart has not stopped hitting the gas pedal. Okumura asks about the commotion in school that morning, and she explains that a new student joined their class that day, a famous model who's incredibly attractive. Okumura is surprised to hear this from Marisa, and she tells him that the new girl will be perfect to cosplay as Lilio's friend. At that moment, Marisa pulls out an old camera, which Okumura recognizes as the same one his senpai used during their regular club activities. Marisa notices him looking at the pictures in the camera, so she immediately apologizes for dragging him into her schemes without considering what he might want. She then asks what he would prefer to do instead. Unexpectedly, Okumura suggests taking more pictures of Arisa in her cosplay, admitting that he actually enjoyed it the last time. His compliment brings tears of joy to Arisa, who is thrilled to finally have his approval. She eagerly begins pulling off her plot armor, ready to get down with him as fast as possible. 
However, she suddenly realizes she couldn't bring her cosplay outfit due to the teachers inspecting everyone's bags earlier. Undeterred, Rarissa quickly comes up with another idea and drags Okumura along with her. They find an empty classroom, where Rarissa suggests they practice with her in her school uniform instead. As she gets excited about the idea, Okumura can't help but wonder why his magnum is preparing to fire a shot inside her, especially since she's not Lilio. They begin the photo shoot with Okumura doing his usual routine, but when Rarissa checks the photos, she is scared by her own appearance as she realizes that her real face without Lilio's cosplay effortlessly resembles Gollum. Okumura tries to reassure her that at least she doesn't look like Freddy Fazbear, but Rarissa explains that she wants to look like Lilio and apologizes for not being too deep. Then, Rarissa has a sudden inspiration. She decides to pretend that her school uniform is part of the cosplay. She removes her glasses, shortens her skirt, and applies a bit of makeup, transforming her appearance to look like the beast instead of the princess. Okumura, momentarily distracted by the change, wonders if he has a soft spot for ugly girls, but then he quickly refocuses on his loyalty to Lilio. Meanwhile, Marisa feels her pose isn't exciting enough and decides to spice things up by making herself more inviting. When Okumura doesn't seem to react, she wonders if the problem is with her pose or if Okumura is just weak down there and cannot stand erect. As she attempts to change positions, her glasses slip off, so she bends down to pick them up, unintentionally giving Okumura what you would call a perfect view of her carefully crafted melons. However, the dude knows his assignment and immediately starts clicking away with his camera. Rurisat accidentally bumps her empty head on the way up and ends up collapsing onto Okumura in an awkwardly sus position, with her cakes near his mouth. Rurisa is immediately thrilled that this is the pose she has been looking for, but Okumura faints from the smell of her bunda. Later, Marisa looks at the photos and goes ketchup red upon realizing she wasn't wearing her cosplay underwear. She demands that he delete all the photos, but before they can, Rurisa gets called to the faculty office. She rushes out, leaving Okumura behind, who decides to keep a few photos for private hands-on activity. At the same time, Makari arrives at the club building, instantly attracting all the simps in the building. They practically suffocate her with their eager advances, and in the chaos, Another girl accidentally splashes water on Mikori. Mamari immediately runs off, feeling embarrassed that her aura has reduced by 500. At the same time, Okumura is in the manga club, feeling like his miserable life could be more interesting than this. While he sulks over how much of a loser he is, he hears the commotion and goes to investigate, only to run into Mamari, who has stumbled on the manga club. Recognizing her from his childhood, Okumura is surprised when she leaps into his arms in excitement. As Mikari reminisces, she's reminded of a moment five years ago when she asked Okumura if he had feelings for anyone. Back then, the clueless idiot openly confessed his love for Lilio, believing she could never hurt him. This memory is one of the reasons Mikari despises manga. In the present, with the losers still searching the hallways for her, Okumura quickly shuts the door and blocks the window to avoid being caught with her and legend has it that they are still searching till this day. He then questions why she suddenly hugged him, and she cheekily admits she hoped to give him a raise, the kind that only occurs in men's panties, but he asks her why she is the one who got wet then. She brushes it off and then requests to dry her clothes there. All at it, Okumura backs her as he immerses himself in his manga, so Mikari casually strips down to her last layer. However, Okumura isn't feeling her and urges her to stop joking around and keep her plot armor on. A few seconds later, she tells him she is done and asks him to have a look, only for him to see the greatest taboo in anime history. As he freaks out, she asks if he finds her attractive. When he tells her she's always been cute, she becomes embarrassed before insisting she's even cuter now as a famous model. However, she becomes annoyed when Okumura tells her he still sees her as the cute little kid he had always known her to be. She snaps at him, shocking him and causing the manga in his hand to fall off. He then mistakenly steps on it and slips landing awkwardly on top of her. He tries to get up, but she holds him close as tightly as possible, a nightmare every guy has when he is not using a rubber. She asks to stay a bit longer, but when Okumura begins removing his jacket, Mikari hesitates, worried he might be taking things too far. However, he simply drapes the jacket over her to keep her warm, then turns to his Lilio manga, asking for its forgiveness. Mikari immediately feels like a useless piece of shit and decides to get dressed again. She then asks if he has a crush on anyone. 
though Marisa is the first person that comes to mind. He assures himself that he's loyal to Lilio, thinking Marissa only crossed his thoughts because of her cosplay. Makari gathers her things, realizing Okumura hasn't changed, and tells him she hates him before leaving. Later, she reflects on the rooftop, wondering why she doesn't just confess her feelings for him. She recalls how she was scouted as a model, hoping Okumura would finally notice her if others did. Even her manager questioned why she liked such a dumbass when she could have anyone. But Makari remembers how Okumura defended her from bullies who mocked her hair, saying it looked like Trump's. Because of that, she got into his favorite manga and styled her hair to resemble Lilio. When she returned to the park, she tried to get his attention, but he only showed interest when she mentioned the manga. While other boys were enamored with her from a young age, Okumura's sigma attitude was why she fell head over heels for him. That's why she resolved not to betray him like the other 3D girls, which is why he entered Delulu and started liking a lifeless 2D character. Since he only puts his trust in an angel, she decides to become that for him, determined to work hard until he finally notices her. Suddenly, she spots the manga club from the rooftop and sees a girl approach him. Marissa starts her usual routine of stripping, while Okumura blocks the windows, causing Mikuri to rush down to investigate. When she arrives, she's heartbroken to see Okumura with a real-life girl and immediately remembers the quote on Reddit that all men do is lie. But then, Marissa approaches her and asks if she'd join her in cosplay, leaving her stunned. As Mikari glances at the posters on the wall and then back at Marisa, she begins to wonder if this is the real Lilio Okumura has been simping for. Marisa explains all the ins and outs of cosplay to Mikari, but she thinks this is too odd for her religious mind. She wonders how Marisa is not ashamed of any of these, but to Okumura's surprise, Marisa admits that while she does feel embarrassed, her love for Lilio overshadows any shame she might feel. However, Mikari remains skeptical until she catches the look on Okumura's face and realizes that Lilio is the key to his heart. Marissa then invites Mikari to join her in cosplaying, prompting Okumura to warn her not to get her hopes up. But to his shock, Mikari agrees without hesitation. It turns out that Marissa isn't the only one willing to do something unusual for someone they love. Mikari also recalls how Okumura hesitated when asked about his crush suggesting there's a chance the idiot might fall for a cosplay of Lilio as well. When Marisa mentions that McCurry will be cosplaying as Muriela, McCurry objects to this, asking why she has to play the role of the sidekick. But seeing this, Okumura is quite impressed that she is also a Mango Otaku. McCurry pulls Marisa aside to insist on cosplaying Lilio herself since that's who Okumura likes, but Marisa is too dumb to see why, even though it is so obvious that even my six-year-old daughter would understand. Unable to reveal her true feelings, Makari claims that she loves Lilio just as much, surprising Marisa. Marisa is convinced by her claim because she is an idiot and immediately pulls off the costume. Revealing her plot in 4K, however, when Makari sees Marisa's huge shipment, she realizes that being the sidekick is the best role she can play since she is built like a pancake. Makari then asks Okumura if he also likes Nuriella but she's caught off guard when the deluded fool suddenly launches into an enthusiastic explanation of how much he loves her. Unfortunately for Mikari, Okumura remains steadfast in his loyalty to Lilio, viewing Muriela as nothing more than a sister. Desperate to get in Okumura's pants at all costs, Mikari agrees when Marisa offers to take her measurements for a cosplay costume. Mikari asks if it will take a month to complete, but Ririsa confidently assures her that it will be ready by the next day, surprising her. The following morning, Mikari heads to the manga club, only to find Marisa in her usual form, requesting to measure her busts again. She thinks she must have made a mistake in the earlier measurement, because how the heck could her balloons be so small? Okumura explains, almost nonchalantly, that Marisa stayed up all night working on the costume. Marisa begins to ramble about the importance of getting every detail exactly right. But Mikari doesn't give two shits about whatever the heck she is on to. It becomes clear to McCary that Ririsa's dedication to making her cosplay as authentic as possible is no joke. When Ririsa finally unveils the finished costume, McCary is shocked at the crap meant for hose she is calling a costume. Okuma reminds her that it's part of her squad's uniform, but McCary can't shake the feeling that it's not any different from what you can find only on OnlyFans. Noticing that Ririsa's costume is equally revealing, McCary is taken aback when Ririsa declares that she'll wear it with her full chest so she decides to go ahead with it too, even though her chest isn't in any way full, as she doesn't want Marisa to outbest her as getting Okumura's attention. 
Later, although Okuma returns away, he can't help but overhear the details of the girls' changing session, including Makari's poorly concealed envy of Rurisa's kadonkadonks. Rurisa seems oddly enthusiastic about the whole thing, leaving Makari unsurprised that she has no friends. While Okumura endures quiet agony, since he can only hear but not see, the girls put the final touches on their hair and makeup before getting into their costumes. Makari barely recognizes herself in the mirror, but she doesn't have to worry since Okumura definitely knows it is her from the size of her small melons as opposed to Rurisa's watermelons. When the girls are ready, they tell Okumura he can finally look, and as he turns around, he's met with a sight that causes his brain to glitch. After a moment of stunned silence, he finally compliments Makori, telling her she looks just like Nuriella. Makori feels like her dreams are coming true, until Okumura promptly shifts his attention back to Lilio. It's then that Makari realizes she's more like Muriella than she thought. Both of them are the overlooked sidekicks, hopelessly pining after a guy who's too focused on a blonde wig and a well-rounded chest to notice what's right in front of him. Muriella would always shout, begging for his attention, but he never noticed her because she looked like a pile of dog poop. Makari feels the same way, so she yells out, asking why he won't look at her. But the two Morins just assume she's getting into character and compliment her performance. Makari accepts the praise, and when she recalls Okumura's interest in Nuriella's cheeks, she turns hers to him and asks if hers are also up to par. The cultured idiot immediately starts simping over her cakes, and Makari seizes the moment, asking if he likes her. He quickly tells her he loves her, and she becomes excited because she has been longing to hear this for ten freaking years. However, she feels like a fool shortly after. Next, Marisa introduces the poses they'll be trying, and despite McCurry's modeling contract restrictions, she decides to go along with it. After setting up the scene, Marisa tells McCurry she can back out if she feels uncomfortable. But after taking another glance at Marisa's fountains and considering how they can affect her chances with Okumura, McCurry says she is down for it. Makari steps forward, and Okumura realizes that the struggle is about to get real, knowing he can't afford to make his meat hard despite the uncensored plot activities going on before him. The struggle is real, so he decides to be like the male character in their favorite manga, Ashford, who can tell his bone where it should go. The first pose involves Lilial healing Muriela by placing her hands on her pointed cannons. As Orisa proceeds with the touching, Okumura tries his best to prevent a nosebleed from his brain disease resulting from too much plot. Makari gets distracted by Okumura's reaction, and when Rurisa touches her cannons, she unintentionally makes some happy noises to show that she is about to climax. Rurisa commends her for the realistic expression, and Makari starts to wonder what exactly is going on, but our depraved MC reassures her that she's doing well. Embarrassed that he saw that, Lilio then tells Makari it's her turn to start the healing process. Okumura has barely managed to keep himself from jizzing from too much excitement. But when Makari places her feminine hands on Rurisa's bazookas, it fires a shot that knocks him to his knees while bleeding from his nose. Wishing he would lose more blood for her also, Makari insists that Lilio continue the healing, but she stumbles and ends up getting stuck on Lilio's outfit. They ask him to help them, shocking him and making him feel like he is being tested by the plot gods. However, he decides to help them, but pretends they're just standbags. He still finds it difficult to lose them, and as he struggles with it, he accidentally removes Rurisa's costume, revealing her laser blasters in 4K. As he goes to the ground from too much blood rushing to his meat, he wonders how Ashford remained a Sigma, even after seeing these forbidden fruits. Later, Muriela realizes that Okumura is a die-hard mango otaku when she sees how happy he gets to talk about it and she discovers that she has never really loved what he loves, and this might be the key to getting in his pants. Marissa observes the good time they're both having and begins to feel a bit jealous. She expresses her gratitude to Makari for assisting with the costume, but Makari drops the bombshell and says that they can't use the photos due to her modeling contract restrictions. Marissa is visibly deflated by the news, but Makari admits that she now understands the appeal of cosplay and would be open to doing it again in the future. As Makari leaves, she reassures herself that she still has time to win Okumura, since he still has a working magnum and seems to have a thing for 3D girls after all. After Makari departs, Rurisa wonders why she is feeling weird, but Okumura snaps her out of it. Rurisa then proposes that they should go ahead and compile the pictures into a cosplay album to sell at the upcoming Golden Week event. Since she's already committed to the event, they only have about a week to complete the project. 
Okumura immediately offers to help with the editing. Although Rarissa tries to tell him it's unnecessary, he insists they should do it together, especially since he's been enjoying the process. That evening, they manage to avoid being caught in the school's nightly security sweep and decide to work through the night in the clubroom. As they get started, Marisa begins teaching Okumura how to edit, but the only thing Okumura desires to edit is to crop out her panties away from her floodgates. Meanwhile, Marisa realizes they have 500 photos to process and starts to panic, regretting they didn't begin sooner. Sensing her anxiety, Okumura gently takes her hand, assuring her that they'll find a way to get it all done together. Just then, a security guard calls out, asking if anyone is still in the room. Okumura reacts quickly and pins Rarissa up against the wall, ready to take the blame if necessary. Fortunately, the guard, who is obviously underpaid for his job, leaves without further investigation. Once the coast is clear, Okumura tells Rarissa they're safe. Rarissa remains momentarily stunned but soon snaps out of it, realizing she's not alone, and gets back to work with renewed determination. A week later, they both look completely exhausted, as if they've emerged from the upside down, but the project is finally complete. When Makari finds out they stayed up all night and are planning to attend an event together, she directly asks Rurisa how she feels about Okumura. Meanwhile, Okumura is wondering if this outing could be considered a date. He tries to tell himself it's just a club activity, but he can't stop stressing about what to wear. He assumes Rurisa didn't put much thought into her outfit, but in reality, she spent hours tearing her room apart trying to find the perfect one. Now faced with Makari's question, Marisa describes Okumura as very supportive, kind of like Ashford, but McCary quickly points out that she's basically admitting she has feelings for him. Rurisa had been questioning her own emotions while searching for an outfit, not understanding why she felt so flustered. Later, when Okumura arrives at the train station, he's still worrying about his appearance, assuming Marisa will show up in something casual. But when she arrives, he turns red at how attractive she looks without her glasses. Marisa, on the other hand, is anxious about whether she looks silly, but Okumura reassures her with a compliment, surprised at her unexpected sense of style. Little did he know, she was just as clueless about fashion as he thought. After seeing some of the wild outfits online, Marisa decided to take the practical route and called McCary for help. McCary agreed to assist the next day and put together an outfit that made Marisa look perfectly presentable. When Marisa thanked her for all the help, McCary shrugged it off, saying they were now even since Rarissa had made a costume for her earlier. Now, Rarissa and Okumura find themselves alone on the train, and Okumura suggests they kill some time before heading to the event. Rarissa starts to feel silly for overthinking everything, seeing how calm Okumura seems. However, in reality, Okumura is only trying to maintain his aura and is barely keeping it together. With both of them dressed up, they actually look like a couple, and Okumura tries to ease the tension. The idiot awkwardly attempts to start a conversation by bringing up a topic about whether she thinks Tanjiro would isekai muse him, but he's caught off guard when Marisa actually has something meaningful to say about it. He tries again by asking if she'd like to hang out somewhere before the event, but when they arrive at a game store, it's still closed. Their next stop is a karaoke bar, but it turns out to be closed as well. As they move on to a manga cafe, they discover there are no available rooms. Okumura notices Rurisa starting to look disappointed, and she eventually stops him to admit that her feet are killing her from walking around in heels all morning. Feeling guilty, Okumura checks to see if she's okay and realizes he's been dragging her around without considering how she might feel. They sit down with no plans left, until Rurisa mentions a spin-off episode of Lilio that aired the previous night. They quickly get caught up in geeking out over Lilio, and the conversation lifts their spirits making Marisa forget all about her earlier discomfort. Okumura apologizes for not being more attentive, but Rurisa reassures him that she always enjoys their time together. Okumura starts to think that maybe real-life girls aren't so bad, at least not when they're like Rurisa, until he catches himself, realizing those thoughts are probably just his loaded magnum talking. Noticing that it's almost time for the event, they head to the hall to set up. Okumura is a bit underwhelmed by the size of the venue, but when Rurisa tries to convince him that it's one of the larger events, she starts getting anxious. At their booth, Okumura suggests they set up their materials, but Rurisa nervously admits that she forgot to print out the covers and posters. Okumura tries to suppress his frustration, especially when Rurisa points out their neighboring booth, which is fully stocked and well-prepared, unlike their blank DVDs. To make matters worse, 
Marissa had hastily written the titles on the DVDs by hand, making them look even more amateurish. Just then, their neighbor, Magino, stops by to greet them. Marisa is surprised to see Magino cosplaying as such a recently popular character. When Magino asks what they're selling, Marisa sheepishly explains that they're new to this and forgot a lot of the basics. Upon hearing that their costume is based on Lilio, Magino is surprised, noting that the series is a bit dated and warning that it might not draw much attention. However, she encourages Marisa by saying that everyone's first time at an event is tough, but success is possible with good sales skills. Okumura suggests that Rurisa put on her cosplay so that people can at least see what they're selling, but Rurisa hesitates, feeling self-conscious around the other cosplayers. Even though Okumura tries to reassure her that her cosplay is much cuter than some of the more revealing outfits around, Rurisa can't help but feel insecure and doubts herself. The event kicks off and Okumura and Rurisa's booth is practically ignored while Magino's table is swamped with customers. Magino and her assistant then approach Rurisa urging her to be more proactive and act as the face of their booth. But as expected, the idiots struggle with the idea of approaching strangers, which is typical of every otaku loser. Finally, someone stops by their booth, but when Marisa mentions that her cosplay is of Lilio, a character whose popularity has faded, the customer starts to lose interest. Okumura, suddenly realizing that selling anything would mean sharing Marisa's alluring cosplay photos with the public, becomes conflicted. When the customer ultimately walks away, Okumura is oddly relieved, almost wishing that no one buys anything. Just then, another potential customer appears and asks if Arisa is in the cosplay room. She confirms, but when the man inquires about panty shots, Okumura gets defensive. Marissa calmly explains that her photos aren't meant to help his edging hobbies, and the customer backs out, complaining about the price. Okumura, still flustered, asks if there's really nothing too suggestive in the photos. Marissa responds that she can't sell anything overly risque, because she's not comfortable with that. He feels a strange relief until it dawns on him that he's acting like a jealous boyfriend. Out of the blue, Marissa suggests they pack up, resigned to the idea that no one will buy outdated cosplay photos. Okamura, recognizing his mistake, insists that Marissa change into her Lilio costume. He soon starts to blush like an idiot and apologizes for his selfishness, admitting that since it's her dream to share her Lilio cosplay with everyone, he wants to help her achieve it. Rurisa hesitates, worried that her cosplay won't be up to par, but Okumura reassures her, telling her that her cosplay is the cutest in the world and that she even made him believe Lilio was real. Before Rurisa can fully grasp the nature of the confession, Okumura quickly leads her to the changing rooms. With little time left before the event concludes, Marisa promises to change as quickly as possible. While she's inside, Okumura paces nervously outside and while he waits, he notices a lot of buzz around Magino's photoshoot. However, his attention is caught by two photographers nearby who are complaining about how lackluster this year's cosplay scene is. Meanwhile, Marisa arrives at the changing room, feeling overwhelmed by the bustling atmosphere, even though many people are already changing out of their costumes to leave. Finding a spot to prepare, Marissa suddenly realizes she forgot essential items, including a wig cap. Without these, she worries she won't be able to pull off her Lilio cosplay. Just then, a fellow cosplayer approaches and offers Rurisa a wig cap, taking her by surprise. In no time, a group of supportive otaku surrounds her, offering help and encouraging her, especially since it's her first time. Thanks to their assistance, Marissa manages to get into her costume. When the others learn she made the costume herself, they're genuinely impressed. Marissa asks if they want their items back, but they explain that everyone receives help at some point and she should simply pay it forward to another cosplayer in the future. One of the girls even recognizes Marissa from her first event and is happy to see her back in action. When Marissa hears that the photo booth is about to close, she quickly turns around, causing the girls around her to insist that she can't go out without being fully covered. One of her old friends offers up her petticoat, and Rurisa finally finishes her outfit, leaving the other girls blushing. As she heads out, Rurisa bumps into a fellow cosplayer, who mentions how worried Okumura was about her and compliments her on having such a supportive partner. Outside, Okumura anxiously waits for Rurisa's grand entrance. Just in time, Rurisa steps out confidently and starts running toward Okumura, as she calls him Ashford. Okumura is surprised to see her, and everyone begins to simp on her as they wonder where this beauty has been 
all the while only to reveal herself when it's just 10 minutes left. Okuma asks Rarisa how she would love to take her pictures, since no one seems to be snapping her yet. However, as she suggests they find a good spot, maybe when he starts taking her pictures, others will join too. All the photographers suddenly rush toward her demanding to take her picture. Okuma is yanked to the side as they all continue to beg to take her picture. One of Lee Fatso decides to moderate everyone, telling them to be polite and orderly, since it's her first time doing this. They soon start to take her pictures but the idiot is shy and bows her head like a shameful convict. However, she soon realizes that she ought to pose, so she starts to make different poses until she slips and almost falls. While some of the photographers complain about how boring her poses are, Ojino calls them stupid for not realizing that she knows what she is doing. Her poses are straight out of the manga. One of the photographers asks another dude who is a cosplay reviewer what he thinks about Rarissa's cosplay, and he replies that even though he doesn't have professional pictures yet, her cosplay seems raw. Like, Lilio came right out of the manga to pose before the camera herself, surprising the guy who asks the question as he reasons that this can be called perfect then. When Ojino announces that it is one minute remaining, she suddenly remembers when her mom didn't support her cosplay dream and called her existence a mistake that should have been avoided by a rubber. This is the first time she is going public with this, and she thinks this is all thanks to Okumura who encouraged her and called her Lilio the cutest thing in the entire world. As Ojino counts down towards zero, Marissa unleashes a signature pose that blows the mind of everyone, pointing toward Okumura as her darling Lord Ashford. Okumura's mouth opens wide in surprise and after the event, he blushes as he goes to meet her. The organizers announce that the event is over and declares that the changing room will soon close, so Ririsa heads toward the changing room immediately. However, on her way, many simps rush toward her to ask for her social handles, but they become disappointed when they discover that she doesn't have any, making them wonder if she is even existing at all or she is just a cardboard cutout. In the changing room, she gets along with other cosplayers, and they decide to successfully waste the time of the viewers with their boring useless talk, which you'd better not know about. Afterwards, she finds the panties she used for her cosplay and asks for the whereabouts of the elf lady who gave her, but they inform that she just left. Despite the challenge in recognizing someone who is out of costume, she decides to find her. As she later packs her bag and prepares to leave, Magino calls her and tells her they hope they will see her at Summer comic -Ed making her blush. She runs off in excitement, thinking about this, and upon reaching Okumura's location, she starts to call out for the elf lady, hoping to find her. However, after a while of constituting a nuisance by yelling her name like a shameless fool, the supposed elf lady appears as a very beautiful lady, which makes Okumura consider cheating on Lilio a little bit. The lady tells Rarisa that she is embarrassing her, revealing that she works at a nearby office, so she should zip her leaky mouth. Rarissa returns the panties but the elf lady tells her she didn't need to return it. Rarissa reveals that it is her first Cosrum fair, so she made a lot of mistakes and ended up selling just one Cosrum. The lady tells her it is always like that, making reference to Mayura, who didn't even sell any copies. Rarissa becomes excited and says that Mayura inspired her to make an incredible Cosrum, just like hers, making the lady feel a bit embarrassed. Rarissa then asks where Mayura was today and the lady reveals that Mayura probably isn't going to cosplay events anymore, surprising Rarissa and prompting her to ask if Mayura is ending cosplay for good, to which she answers yes. Surprised to hear this, they wonder what happened, and she tells them that things are just tougher when you're older and have a job. She then turns to leave, telling them that she will relay their greetings to her. Later on their way back, Okumura notices Rarissa looking like she just lost all her savings to a crypto scam, and he thinks of how to lift her spirits. However, she tells him not to worry about her as she would keep going to events, and she is sure she will run into her again someday. She finally reveals that she wants to go to Summer comic stating that even though things didn't work out today, she wants to keep making an even better Cosrums and keep going to more events. A few moments later, she tells him that he is the reason she is still doing all this, and then reveals that she feels weird around him lately, with her heart beating fast and her lungs closing up whenever he is close to her. Okumura is surprised, as he realizes he is not the only one who feels this way, and Wani thinks she is about to tell him she loves him. She suddenly reveals that she loves having him as her cosplay partner, making him feel like biting his tongue and unoliving himself immediately. The deluded idiot immediately dismisses his feelings as something that just happened, because he was her photographer while she also claims to respect him so much as her partner. 
This is the story of two numbskulls flocking together. The following week as Makura gets to school, she can't stop worrying about Okumura's outing with Ruriso over the weekend, as she thinks that Ruriso might have seized the opportunity to go at it with him. However, she calms herself with the conviction that Okumura thinks she is a better option. She gets to the manga club room, and upon opening the door, hoping to meet Okumura, she finds Rurisa getting dressed. Rurisa immediately thanks her for lending her some clothes for the event, but Makari yells back at her, saying she should put some clothes on. She then asks how the event went, wondering if she and Okumura had any soft moments together, to which Rurisa replies that they had a lot of fun. She then says that she has been thinking about her question since the last time about how she feels about Okumura, and she came to realize that she loves him as a supportive photographer and friend. Upon hearing this, McCary immediately realizes that she is a perfect Oxford Dictionary description of stupid. However, she is glad that both her and the idiot who loves Lilio are total morons, which means she's still got a chance with him. She then asks for Okumura's whereabouts, and Rarisa replies that he has tests today, hence he will be late. Meanwhile, she decided to use the opportunity to prepare her cosplay costume before he arrives. However, as Harissa makes the preparations, she suddenly gets called from class, reminding her that she ought to be present for mandatory tutoring. So she immediately runs out of the club room and tells McCurry to watch her clothes for her. A while later, Okumura returns from class and is shocked when he sees McCurry dressed in Lilio's costume. McCurry, feeling embarrassed, tells him that she thought that if she dressed up as Lilio, she might be able to understand him a little better, or if this would make him like her a little bit more. She plays reverse psychology on him by stating that she will remove it immediately since it makes her look like a walking pile of <laughs> but the idiot's brain starts glitching from too much excitement. McCary realizes that this asshole does not care about who wears the costume, which means he is not into Arisa, but is rather perfectly loyal to Lilio. She thinks she can use this to her advantage and immediately jumps at him, putting her mini-sized plot on his chest. Okumura's brain starts to fry immediately even though that girl's melons are unripe, and as his mini sausage also starts to launch, she decides to take it up a notch by telling him she is feeling sus and would like him to touch her wherever he wants. This gets too much for Okumura, but he remembers that he is Sigma and tells her he can't do this because even though Lilial is his waifu, she doesn't belong to only him, so it won't be okay to cross that line with her. Makari is disappointed but also respects him, and she wishes he'd eventually feel something for him. Marissa suddenly arrives and meets them in a sus position. They try to explain themselves, but she approaches and starts glazing over McCurry's cosplay appearance. McCurry thinks that she doesn't look good because of how small her milk jugs are, but Rarissa tells her it doesn't matter. She further says that the great thing about cosplay is that anyone can be whatever character they want to be. Okumura attests to this by saying that fan art isn't about being accurate or correct, as bad fan art is equally valid. McCary immediately falls on her knees, feeling guilty that she is in this for ulterior motives, not because she buys any fan art bullcrap. Rurisa suddenly notices McCurry's sus panties, making her embarrassed, and she swears she will never wear this costume again. Following this, Okumura meets Ogino, who had suddenly texted him to join in a photo shoot. Okumura expresses that he wanted to improve his skills before the next event, so he figured he could learn a few things from watching him. Ojino starts feeling like an award-winning photographer, but he doesn't know that Okumura only decided to come because he doesn't have anyone else to go to. As they head inside, Ojino tells him about the cosplay costume concept they have for today. He further explains some gibberish Okumura doesn't give a sh** out, but he allows him to ramble on with his mumbo-jumbo. Okumura soon sees Majino, and he is delighted to see her cosplay outfit. As they prepare to begin the photo shoot, Ojino begins a photography lecture only to end up snapping the same picture as Okumura, but he calls Okumura a novice. They take more pictures and Majino comes over to take a look at Okumura's own. She commends him for great work, and while Ojino tries to take the credit for being a good coach, she shuts him up and says his pictures are not any different from Okumura's. Majino then asks Okumura if he is ready to take some sus photos, and he shyly says yes. Majino immediately switches to OnlyFans model mode, but as Okumura attempts to take the photos, he begins to feel guilty and says he'd not be comfortable doing this if it was him. This is followed by some unnecessary talking, and Ojino suddenly tells Okumura that he is indebted to him for allowing him to discover Lilio in the last cosplay event. 
He adds that he and the photographers have always wondered who would be next, leaving Okumura to wonder what the heck he is talking about. Ojino goes on to explain that there are four women who stand atop all the others in the cosplay world, the four heavenly queens of cosplay. Okumura wonders who the hell is giving these names, and Ojino proceeds to list the four of them, including Mayura, who is number four. Okumura mentions Mayura's retirement, and Ojino attests to it, but he adds that this is why they have been wondering who would take her crown. However, when Lilio came to the scene last summer comic it, they immediately felt that she had to be the next. Ojino then reveals that this was why he called Okumura over to her rival's photoshoot, so his ugly won't be the reason for Lilio's downfall. Ojino tells him that he has sworn to take Magino to the heights of her cosplaying career, and Magino replies that she'd be willing to go along with him. Okumura immediately realizes that he's been a very useless partner to Rurisu when he sees how Magino and Ojino are working together, so he becomes determined to help Rurisu reach the top two if she is willing to get there. The following week, Okumura appears in the manga club room with a manga collection to give Rurisu better posing styles for cosplay, and after going through the mangas for a while, Rurisu comes up with an idea to take a picture of Lilio in trouble. As Okumura takes the pictures, he remembers a lesson from Ojino's long, boring lecture, and immediately puts it into practice, which instantly improves the results of the pictures. Barisa is surprised by this, and asks how he got so good, and he reveals that he went to take lessons from that ugly fatso. Barisa immediately blushes, as she realizes that he did this because of her, and he tells her that Ojino told him that this isn't about them working separately, but that they have to work together as a team. He tells her that if she wants to be cosplay famous, then he can't be there only for the ride. He has to put in the work, too. He asks her if this is what she wants, but she tells him that she's just happy to show her love for Lilio and has never been interested in getting famous or taking Mayra's crown. However, the comic hit event, where everyone was fawning over her, made her want more. She tells Okumura how much she had fun at the event and hopes to attend even bigger events so she can show her love for Lilio to bigger crowds. She then asks him to help her get there, and Okumura swears on his baby-making factory that he will do all he can to make sure she reaches the heights she wants. The next day, while in the club room, the student council suddenly knocks on the door. Okumura becomes shocked and immediately hides Harisa before going to open the door. The student council informs him that the aquarium club has been promoted to full club status, while the manga club has been demoted from full club to meeting group, shocking him. He asks why, and the student council reveals that the manga club actually hasn't been qualified for full club for three years, and in that respect, the room will be transferred to the aquarium club. Upon hearing this, Marisa becomes terrified, as she realizes that her dream is about to be shattered. That's it for this video. If you want the next part, comment the MC is a moron, and if you like anon recaps like this, then watch this video right here.